At the turn of the 20th century, black doctors around the country opened hospitals to serve the medical needs within their communities. Durham, North Carolina, was already a thriving economic center in the 1900s. Dr. Aaron Moore was the first black physician there, providing medical services, but also dedicated to the city's economic prominence. He, along with John Merritt and other business persons, had started the North Carolina Mutual and Provident Company in 1898. Recognizing the unserved needs of Durham Blacks, who suffered from various medical diseases, Moore rallied Merrick and Stanford Warren to create a hospital. They set out to work, planning, advocating, fundraising, beyond highlighting widespread disparities between treatment facilities for whites and blacks in Durham, they invoked fear of contact and spread of disease to overcome apathy in the white community. Yes, we need our own hospital because blacks still work for you on your jobs and in your homes, and we want everybody to remain healthy. This appeal brought more than quiet philanthropy, but support from white leaders. In 1901, Lincoln Hospital, a wood frame facility located at the corner of Cozart Street and East Proctor Street, was opened. In acknowledgement of the support from the white community, the sentiment was expressed that this was a striking example of what can be accomplished in a community where both races work together. And support they did receive. The Duke family reputation for supporting blacks was well known, and their funds built Lincoln Hospital. John Merrick was the personal barber of Washington Duke and was mentored by him when they traveled together. I learned that the family's support for blacks began long before this. During the Civil War, slaves proved their loyalty to the Duke family by safeguarding their women when the men were soldiers in the Confederacy. The Dukes remained ever grateful. They planned to erect a monument to the loyal slaves on Trinity College campus, now Duke University. But this persuasive Lincoln Hospital planners convinced them to redirect the funding for the statue to building the hospital. The hospital opened with 50 patient beds. The black community of Durham suffered from medical ailments related to inadequate housing, insufficient heating, poor ventilation, poor diet, and overwork. Tobacco and textile factory workers also suffered from dust and particle inhalation diseases, malnutrition, tuberculosis, typhoid, pneumonia, diphtheria, measles, and influenza were rampant. Stillbirths and early deaths among blacks far exceeded those of whites in Durham. The hospital being located in the Haiti community allowed blacks to reach the facility by walking or short trip transportation services. Training nurses was imperative. The Board of Trustees organized the Lincoln Hospital School of Nursing in 1903. The program was approved by the Board of Nurse Examiners of the State of North Carolina. Classes were taken at North Carolina College. The 1914 class of graduates is pictured with Dr. Moore. The motto of the Lincoln Hospital School of Nursing was, Give the best to the world and the best will come back to you. In 1922, the hospital was damaged by fire. Repaired but needing to expand, funding began for this purpose, but routed to a greater need, construction of a nurse training school. It was completed in 1924 and opened on January 15, 1925. The nurse's home was completed in 1924 with a funding gift from B. N. Duke in memory of his son, Andrew B. Duke. In the hospital's early years, a partnership was made with Leonard Medical School at Shaw University in Raleigh, North Carolina. 
It was the first four-year medical school for Blacks in the United States and the first medical school in North Carolina. It served as a pipeline to practice at Lincoln. Seven of the original Lincoln physicians graduated from Leonard Medical School, including Dr. Aaron Moore. While Leonard closed in 1918, this spurred Lincoln to establish its own training programs. Lincoln became a magnet for some of the most talented Black physicians on the East Coast. Partnerships with Duke Hospital, Watts Hospital, and others in North Carolina ensured a steady supply of residents for Lincoln's education programs. Lincoln's commitment to the community began by focusing on treatment and preventive care to reduce morbidity and mortality of Durham Blacks by targeting maternal and child health, infectious disease, and health behavior through health education, specialized clinics, and free medical care. Early on, administrators determined that no patient would be turned away for lack of money to pay for services. Therefore, charity patients were admitted, not confined to any quotas. According to his 1938 report, Two-thirds of Lincoln Hospital's 1,879 patients were charity cases. Demand for services in the community soon outgrew the modest facilities, and a community-wide effort was launched to fund a Lincoln Hospital new construction. James B. Duke and Ben Duke offered to match $75,000 of contributions from other members of the community. John Sprunt Hill and George Watts donated the land at 1301 Fayetteville Street, the four-acre former Stokes Farm. The new Lincoln Hospital opened in 1925. On move-in day, the new facility admitted 85 patients. Eighteen of these were from towns where Blacks had no health care facilities. Because of the broad-based community support of and race-related pride of ownership in the institution, Durham residents frequently referred to Lincoln as our hospital. Continuing the goals of this health care and prevention services to Blacks, Lincoln provided medical care with an on-site laboratory and radiology department. Per Dr. Preston Reynolds, in 1940, 5,636 patients were seen in the outpatient clinic at Lincoln, and 20,858 days of inpatient hospital care were provided. Lincoln Hospital offered a two-year training program for laboratory and radiology technology health professionals. Two students were accepted into the program every six months. Mrs. Margaret Kennedy Goodwin was recruited to Lincoln Hospital to develop and run the x-ray department. She was the first Black person elected to membership in the North Carolina Society of Radiology Technology and the first Black elected president of the group. Lincoln was an attraction for graduate physicians from Leonard Medical School and other schools because of their state-of-the-art surgery facilities. In 1940, surgeons performed 236 major and 1,399 minor operations. Pictured here is Dr. Braddock performing with the surgical team consisting of assistant surgeon, RNs, anesthesiologists, and instrument nurses. From the beginning, the focus on reducing maternal and infant mortality was primary. Lincoln's gynecology, obstetrics, and pediatrics unit promoted prenatal and well baby care. A pediatrics ward was established with a crippled children's clinic in a joint effort with Duke Hospital's orthopedic departments. The Well Baby Clinic was originally established by Dr. Beard Brooks, a white pediatrician. 
Dr. Cleveland, the first Black pediatrician in Durham, continued and improved services. Black mothers were encouraged to bring their children back for checkups to ensure that their babies were reaching growth and weight standards for their age. Proper diets and feeding schedules were also taught. All babies at the clinic were immunized. In 1963, the state calculated the rate of infection among black children was lower than the rate among white children in Durham. Durham held annual baby reunions celebrated on National Hospital Day when families with babies born at Lincoln came together. Lincoln Hospital was accredited by the American Medical Association for internship training in 1925 and by the American College of Surgeons in 1933. In 1934, the reorganization of Lincoln Hospital and the acquisition of funds from the Julius Rosenwald Fund and the Duke Endowment led to the establishment of the medical internship and residency programs. Pediatric, orthopedic, internal medicine, surgery, and OBGYN residents, primarily from Duke University Medical School, rotated through Lincoln from 1930 into the late 1960s. Medical and surgical staff of the hospital spent time teaching residents and interns on ward rounds. Many Lincoln students, both black and white, went on to achieve distinction in their field. Beginning in the 1930s, Lincoln Hospital became a popular place to host continuing medical education conferences. The proximity of the North Carolina College dormitories provided a place for physicians to stay during Jim Crow. It was a favorite meeting site for the annual Old North State Medical Society. Lincoln hosted meetings of the administrators of black hospitals in the Carolinas and Virginia. In 1935, they hosted its first postgraduate clinic, which became an annual event. The clinic drew black and white physicians from all over North and South Carolina and Virginia to join speakers from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill and Duke University. The hospital had six superintendents during its 75-year history. First, Dr. Aaron Moore from 1901 to 1923. Dr. Charles Shepard from 1923 to 1934, William Rich, 1934 to 1959, Dr. Frank Scott, 1960 to 1967, Ronald Horman, 1967 to 1968, and Larry Suit from 1968 to 1976. He became the first Black Vice President of Durham Regional Hospital. Outstanding Black physicians, many of them noted as first in Durham and North Carolina, always providing the best in services and training, including Dr. Charles Curry, Chief of Internal Medicine, Dr. Leroy Swift, OBGYN, and Dr. Robert E. Dawson, first Black EENT at Lincoln. Black doctors in Durham were evident members of the prosperous class that built Durham's Black Wall Street. Their families were active in civic and social activities, promoting yes-you-can role modeling for youth in the community. Dr. Charles DeWitt Watt served as Chief of Surgery during the 1950s and 1960s at Lincoln. He was part of the Howard University Duke University Medical School Residency Program at Lincoln. With integration, he saw both Lincoln Hospital and Watts Hospital decline when former patients elected to partake of services previously barred to them. The hospitals were seen to provide subpar medical services to Durham residents. In 1965, Lincoln Hospital integrated its medical staff, but patients of both races were increasingly 
admitted to other hospitals. Dr. Watts founded the Lincoln Community Health Center in 1971. The health center and hospital operated together in the Fayetteville Street facility until September 25, 1976, when inpatients were transferred to Durham County General Hospital. After completion of the new Lincoln Community Health Clinic in 1982, services were transferred there. Lincoln Hospital was demolished in February 1983. Saying farewell was a solemn and tearful occurrence for many in Durham when our hospital was no more. 